after a, a tough couple of years for the oil and gas industry as they, they got used to uh, the new cost environment, new oil price environment, uh, what we saw as a trend in 2018 was uh, the emergence of the deals. There was, there was plenty of new deals being done. Uh, they were good to see because there was quite novel uh, innovative deal structures being used, such as retention of decommissioning liability. Uh, there was new parties coming involved into the, the United Kingdom continental shelf, which was good to see. And the use of, of private equity uh, firms showing uh, an involvement in the, the UK as well. As the oil price rises, so does the expectations of staff. Um, and what the employment team in Burness Paul in 2018 has seen is a, a significant increase in trade union backed disputes, whether that's um, disputes in relation to where pay rises, where pay expectations aren't met, or whether there's employees demanding greater terms and conditions, such as a move back to the two, three rotors. So from a financing perspective, we've seen a number of key developments for e &P companies and operators uh, during 2018, in particular in relation to the startup phase and on M&A activity. What's also been a feature is the spread of alternative, additional forms of debt support. This has included equity participation in the corporate group, uh, forward sales arrangements, uh, production and revenue sharing agreements and even more simplified corporate lending but provided by alternative non-bank funders. Those types of funders uh, tend to look for additional participation rights in the underlying asset, for example by way of uh, providing commodity hedging um, and being involved in the marketing of the asset. The increased cash available to operators has certainly led to um, an uptake in uh, tendering, there are more contracts being awarded, so um, that's positive news for the oil and gas services sector. Um, that said, of course, the challenges still remain. Our clients universally tell us that margins continue to be squeezed, so there are challenges left for the uh, sector. One of the trends that we've certainly seen is the internationalisation, the continued internationalisation of the services sector. And we see um, activities uh, from Aberdeen uh, much more globally than previously. The North Sea is really at the apex of innovation and the Oil and Gas Technology Centre is really only just getting into its stride and developments like the TechX Accelerator are really exciting. As a mature basin, the North Sea is as rich in data as it is in oil, and that presents tremendous opportunity for offshore projects around the world. But with that opportunity comes great risk of cybersecurity breach, of insider threat, and it's a really important issue for the industry, and particularly where that starts to affect production. already seeing a forecast for, for the number of field development plans getting approved uh, in the future, uh, increasing into double figures, which is the first time since 2013. So all of this is great, translates to, to more spend in Aberdeen, more projects, that's exactly what we want to see. Given the increase in the liquidity of the senior debt market and the resulting opportunities for refinancing that that brings back to the table, we think that the near-term prospects for oil and gas project financing are as healthy as they've been for a number of years now. Managing staff expectations as the oil price rises is not easy um, and my prediction for the future is that employers who don't invest in engaging with their workforce are going to find that the appetite for a fight over pay rises or a fight over a change to their terms and conditions is going to increase. With the oil price between $60 and $80 a barrel, that's really the Goldilocks zone for innovation. The industry has to innovate at that level to stay competitive and innovation is absolutely key for the future success of the industry. Looking forward, uh, I'm not here to predict uh, oil prices uh, or tell you the outcome of Brexit, but I do think that we are um, seeing some recovery in the oil and gas market and I think that um, the next year ought to be significantly uh, more positive for the industry as a whole.